Good morning. Welcome to Faith in the Morning. Something good is going to happen to you today, so expect miracles. Thank you for joining me today. Faith in the Morning exists to help you start your day with faith and encouragement. So however you're watching or listening or streaming, I'm so glad that you're a part. You know, this week we've been sharing messages from earlier this year to help you go into the new year. And today I want to share with you some interviews. But before we do, one of the things we we'll share tonight during our midweek experience is about the favor of God and how God has favor for you and you walk in favor in 2023 is going to cause you to experience extreme goodness of God. And what we covered in May of this year was someone walking in your calling, developing, going further in your call. And one of the things that's been on my heart for the longest now is being able to interview different people and bring their stories with you. And I was able to do that so many times this year on our Faith in the Morning podcast. And I want to share with you some of the podcast interviews today that I've done with friends and elders and mentors over this past year that can encourage you so that you can live the life God has for you and go through into 2023 full of faith and hope. So if you haven't already subscribed to our podcast, and if you're newer to our podcast, welcome. We have people listening from all over. So listen to these podcast interviews today and be encouraged. And we have a very special guest. My life, my family have been blessed by her ministry for a long time now. I got to share right before I remember when she prayed over me when I was 12 years old. I've been one of the first ministries I gave into outside of our church was to her ministry when I was 12 years old. I began giving 12 to the ministry she did, not just in the United States, but all around the world. I've been able to follow her ministry from a child. Then remember when I was at ORU, she would come speak in chapel. I remember her speaking at Victory Christian Center, and of course at Word of Faith and Faith Christian Center, and I'm still watching her as she touches the lives all around the world. So it's my absolute honor to introduce to you, some of you who've never heard her before, some of you saw, have seen her in person, Reverend Marilyn Hickey. Thank you so much, Pastor Marilyn, for being with us today. As I said before, it is an absolute honor to have you with us on Faith in the Morning. Well, it's a privilege for me. And long-term relationships, I think, are miracles. So thank you for this opportunity. And I believe people are going to be set free, blessed, changed, transformed because of the wisdom of God's word. Amen. I believe so as well. And so I just got word that you have a brand new book camp out that's called Read It, Speak It, Do It. Read it, yes. speak it, do it. That gets right to the point. Can you share with us why you wrote this book? Well, I wrote this book because I think often we need a process. You know, we think, well, if I read it, will that help? Yes, but if you speak it also, and then if you do it. And the process of the miraculous is really read it, speak it, do it. So I want people to see miracles in their lives. And that's why I encourage the book. Awesome. So what is one of your favorite scriptures about speaking the word? Well, of course, it's hard for me to take just one because, you know, I memorize books of the Bible. So I would say, of course, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm more than a conqueror. Thanks be to God who always leads, always, always leads me to triumph in Christ. And so I like to inspire faith. I first heard Kenneth Hagin that inspired faith in me. And of course, walking in the call that I had to cover the earth with the word, it took lots of faith, especially at that time, because people didn't believe in women, but God did. Amen. Why is speaking, not just reading the word, important for the miraculous life? I think the process is very important because speaking it, because I can remember saying things well, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I can remember getting into situations. I actually got to teach the Bible on an educational, uh, what can I say, uh, television setup. And they didn't believe in women, but they believed in me. And that was a process that was very helpful to me because now, Saudi Arabia, this is hilarious to me. Saudi Arabia really likes old women. <laughs> you know, people say, oh, when you get old, you know, the doors close. The doors haven't closed for me. 
the doors are still open and honey i'm running through them amen amen what's your favorite new testament example of this principle my favorite new testament example it's difficult for me to say because i have so many different ones and i refer to them on a daily way so you know i speak promises every day like you know of course i can do all things through christ who strengthens me i'm more than a conqueror uh, i speak promises like i'm surrounded with favor like a shield and folks that's what i have to have because in some of these places you know they're ready to kill me but i've been in many many places that were ready to kill me and i'm still here god we have a big god yes we do amen how do uh, speaking the promises and faith go together how do speaking the promises and faith go together so i know you share a lot about it in your book and for the someone who's just learning these principles how would you say that faith and speaking the promises go together well sometimes you hear yourself say these things and you think am i crazy you know i can't do that or nobody will let me do that but the more you speak it i'm telling you i know this by experience the more you speak it, the more you believe it. The more you believe it, the more you receive it. So read it, speak it, do it is very important. Amen. So when we talk about this, how does someone take a passage of scripture that they find in the Bible that applies to them and begin to speak it over their life? Because I know you share about more about this in your book. Now, would you repeat that? I'm not sure I got it all. Well, I know you share about this in your book. How does someone take a scriptural passage and speak it over their life? Well, this is what I do. And this is how I started. I started seeing certain promises of things I wanted to do. And I began to speak those, you know, because when I started, you know, nobody believed in women doing anything. But I began speaking, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm surrounded with favor like a shield. And I spoke those promises and I saw them come to pass. Amen. Amen. So how is this book different from other books that are already out there? Well, I think this book would give you a process. Hmm. A lot of people think, well, you know, I can't read it or I can't speak it or I can't do it. But if you start, I have found if you start with a process, pretty soon it becomes a provision in your life and it works. So I get up every morning. I make coffee first. That kind of gets me cooking. <laughs> and then I began to speak the promises of God over my life for the day and for the future, even for the year and for nations that I still want to go to. And they love me. I just say this, Muslims love me. They don't want to kill me. They want me to speak to them. Amen. And as you said multiple times in this interview already uh, about you've gone places that no one else has gone before. You've blazed a trail. And you know, I've shared a lot about you to my daughters. I have four daughters. And I know my wife has followed your ministry for years. So what would you share with women who are coming up in ministry today, what would you impart to them? To have nations open. I, I would suggest that you pray over those nations every day, that you knock on doors, see what you could get in, because you may get in in some unusual way. You know, now they have Zoom, they have so many different ways. And so maybe pick a way that you think is possible or could be possible and start speaking that. And if you like coffee, it wakes you up in the morning. This is a good time to fix coffee, speak promises, and see mountains move because you need what is on the other side of the mountain. Amen. Amen. And so in addition to what you've shared already, what is another reason why you want everyone to read this book? Why do I want everyone to read? Because everyone everyone needs the supernatural i don't know how you're going to have the supernatural without the word of god you know it takes the promises of god to bring the provisions of god so 
you know, set up something that you can speak daily and maybe some things that look just impossible to you and start speaking, you know, I can go to this nation and I can do this. They love me in Saudi Arabia. They love women. They love women speakers. They love women who teach the Bible. And I say those things and sometimes it takes a while, but pretty soon I see the provision of them. So if you say, well, how do you know it works? I know it works by my lifestyle. I have a miraculous lifestyle. Amen. Amen and amen. Anything else you want to share with everyone watching and listening? Well, I have this teapot here and I brought it on purpose. So let me show it to you. Can you see it? I can see it. It's a Chinese teapot. So the first time I got into China, I went into a shop and bought a teapot. And I thought, I'm going to keep this as a reminder to me that I have great favor in China. And so I keep this and I brought it along today to encourage you to put something before your eyes to remind you that God has big things for you. And, you know, again, it's a process. So now getting to go into China, do meetings and invitations and, you know, my name is known. Hickey rhymes with sticky. Who knows how they use it, but I like it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Can you pray for everybody watching and listening? Yes. So, Father, I just pray right now for everyone who is watching and listening that you would put in their hearts a desire to do the miraculous, that they're not just here as extra baggage on the earth. They're here as extra miraculous on the earth and that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Everyone, you can get the new book, read it, speak it and do it directly from Marilyn Hickey Ministries at marylandandsarah.org. That's marylandandsarah.org or by calling 888-637-4545. Everybody watching right now, if you're watching somewhere where you can put in the comment, thank Pastor Marilyn for being with us today. Once again, Reverend Marilyn Hickey, thank you so much. It is an absolute honor. Thank you for sharing with us. Thank you for writing this new book. And thank you for your faithfulness and blazing a trail for so many people, for leading the way, showing how faith works and going to places that no one else would go. But now you've opened the door for so many things in the body of Christ. Thank you for everything you've done. I My guess. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And today we have a special guest who's going to share with us today. I've known, we were talking about this before we hit the record button. We've known each other now for about 17 years. And like, wow, it doesn't seem that long, but it really has been that long. Uh, for some of you who are members at Faith, she was a special guest for our Women of Virtue cruise we did in 2015. But you may not know this, that when we were planning this in 2014 and talking about it, my wife Raquel was saying, Jenny has to be a speaker. Jenny, Jenny has to be there. She has to be there. And so we sent the invite and she graciously accepted. And of course, she was a great blessing on the cruise. And since then, she's done so many things. She's been a missionary. She's opened up orphanage. She's been a ginormous blessing. One of the things I like a lot about Jenny's ministry is the uniqueness of the sweetness of the anointing she carries. And when she ministers, whether it's by word or by worship, there's a sweetness that comes into the atmosphere. And I believe this is that as we record the podcast today. So help me welcome, not a stranger to Faith Christian Center or to other faith ministries, our friend Jenny. Hi, Kirk. It's so, so good to be with you all. It's such an honor. I think it is really amazing what you're doing and what you're bringing for for people to hear and for people to build their faith because this is what we need this is what the world needs we need faith in god so um you're doing a great work and honestly it's such an honor it was an honor to be with you seven years ago on that cruise it was my first cruise actually and my last <laughs> but it was such a powerful time it was such a powerful time and i just love that the lord has brought us back together yeah and so one of the reasons yeah. jenny on here sharing is she has just released a brand new book called sacred smallness and jenny can you tell us about it yeah definitely so this book is called sacred smallness finding kingdom greatness 
in a fruitful hidden life. And this book is a desire and a journey into finding true, at the heart of it, true soul contentment in in the place God has called us to. Um, it's about surrender. It's about worship. It's about humility. Um, just a little bit of background. Um, you know, I grew up in a ministry family. I'm the granddaughter of Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, which some of you may know, some of you may not know, but it, you know, it's a big ministry family. I grew up going to conferences, much like Carrot grew up conferences, churches, sitting in the seats, all these things. And as I would sit there in these conferences, this was years ago, God began to stir my heart that there's more, you know, conferences, church life. That's such a beautiful expression of the kingdom of heaven. It's such a beautiful picture and God is moving so mightily. But I realized and throughout the years, I've, I had realized even more that this expression of the kingdom of God, as mighty as it is, is not the only expression of the kingdom of heaven. I mean, there are so many things that are unseen that are sacred. There are so many things that are hidden and so many people that are hidden, whether it's a missionary, whether you're a stay-at-home mom, what, there's so many things in the hiddenness and in the secret place that are holy. And I feel like in growing up, I never thought about that. You know, I thought, oh, I'm going to preach the gospel. I'm going to do this. And all the only thing in my mind was I was going to stand on a stage and hold a microphone. This was the kingdom of God to me. And in that, you know, that's a good, you know, a good motivation. And that, you know, that was a dream from God. But I realized throughout the years that God took me through seasons of surrender where he would call me into places that looked the furthest away from a dream that I felt like he had given me. One thing that um, I write about in my book is it's so easy to make our dreams and our visions an idol. And they become an idol when we hear the voice of God and we choose our dream over our daily bread of hearing the voice of God. And I found, you know, I... Long story short, because you'll, you'll just have to get the book to read more. But um, there was a season in my life where I was 100% sure I was going to go out and preach the gospel and travel. And I would hear the word available in my heart. And so, you know, available means to be suitable or ready for use. So there was a time where I was like, I need to be suitable or ready for use. Whatever God wants me to do. If he wants me to go to California tomorrow to preach at the church. If he wants me to go to Africa tomorrow. And what he wanted me to do in that next season was to simply help my grandparents, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. And it was during that time that I realized, wow, ministry is not standing on a stage holding a microphone. First of all, ministry is love. So if that means that I'm standing on a platform in front of millions of people, it's out of a place of surrender, then I'm going to say yes. But if God has asked me to go behind the scenes, go to a hidden place, then if my answer to him is always yes, then that's ministry too. So basically, throughout the, for three years, I was my grandparents' cook, and literally, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but it was the grace of God. I was right where the Lord wanted me. And so anyway, it talks about that. And then it in my journey, the Lord had invited me, had, had put on my heart a love for the fatherless. I wrote a book to young people whose parents went through divorce about the father's love called Abba, finding comfort in the father after your parents' divorce. And so in that writing of that book, God began to stir my heart for the fatherless. So I go to different places. I'm preaching. I'm not, I wasn't working with my grandparents anymore. Um, but I was preaching and every place I would go, I would ask if there were abandoned children, if there were orphans, and they would say yes, and maybe they would take me to an orphanage. And I knew there was a need. I was just asking God, where, how do I pour out? So I was invited to Greece and Bulgaria to speak at a youth conference. And I was asking that same question. Are there abandoned children? 
what is the orphan crisis like? And they told me about the orphan crisis in Greece because of the refugee crisis, because of the financial crisis, lots of crises. <laughs> um, and uh, I said, well, what if we started an orphanage? And when I said that, the fire of God started in my heart and I knew this was an assignment from him. I went to Greece. I moved to Greece after a, a few months of surrender. I moved overseas to Greece into this hidden place. And it was in this place that God began to purify my heart, to, to show me, you know, conferences, churches, events. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's powerful. But there's more. You know, Heidi Baker says it's not, how does she say it? Um, it's not this or that it's this and uh, maybe I got it wrong, but anyway, it's that, it's that idea that in the kingdom of God, God is so like many fold. There's so many sides to him. There's so much to him that we can't contain him to what our experience is as the Christian Western Christian church that, Oh, this is a move of God. And oh, I feel so sorry for them because it doesn't look like that. No. This is a move of God, and this is a move of God. And I've always found it such a privilege that the Lord would invite me to a place that was so hidden, you know, a place that I live, my husband and I, we live in this small village in Greece. Nobody cares who you are. No, the only person that knows me in Greece, you know, is that I'm the American who orders the Americano at my local, you know, coffee shop. So. Anyway, this is a journey of surrender, you know, and so whenever the Lord had invited me to go, I like to say that he invited me to walk with him in Greece. Uh, whenever that happened, it was a, it was something of surrender, you know, like I, one prayer that I had prayed before the Lord constantly was this. I don't care what it looks like as long as I'm following you. And, you know, that prayer takes us. If we pray that prayer with earnest, heartfelt devotion, we pray that prayer. I don't care what it looks like as long as I'm following you. That takes us wherever the Lord would have us. It can take us to a place in front of people, in front of thousands, in front of multitudes, but it also can take us behind closed doors. Um, I'm throwing a lot of things out there and I'm hoping that it's making sense, but there's one, one really important group of people that I feel the Lord always wants to show his honor upon. It's always the hidden places. You know, the scripture says in Corinthians that uh, it's the hidden places that deserve the most glory, you know, the unseen parts of the body. And um, one of those unseen groups are the stay at home moms, you know, and um, you have children. So you understand the sacrifice and, and the dedication and the devotion that it takes in raising a family and, and investing your life in these children. And um, Raquel is amazing and such a superhero to me. Um, and so, you know, I believe that in this narrative that the kingdom of God, you can only please God if your life looks this way. You know, you're going to conferences, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're writing books. There can be so much shame placed on, I'm going to do quotations, a normal life. There's so much shame that the enemy tries to put on people if they're just a mom or they're just a teacher or they're just a doctor or they're just, you know, they're not in the fivefold ministry groups. But the Lord is not the one putting that shame on people because he has assigned people to those places. So I believe that God is removing the shame off of those who have felt like they're not measuring up enough for him because they don't fit this picture of ministers or don't fit this picture of going everywhere. They're just at home with their toddler. I feel like I'm talking to somebody right now. Like you have cried tears because you just feel like your life is going nowhere. But here is the beautiful truth 
that when our calling, wherever we are, if we're saying to him, I don't care what it looks like, as long as I'm following you, if he calls us into a season of hiddenness, a season where nobody is thanking you, nobody knows your name, you have this soul satisfaction, this soul contentment, because you are abiding. That is where fruitfulness is. Fruitfulness is not only in numbers. You know, that can be, I feel like fruit, I feel like fruitfulness and faithfulness, like abiding brings that fruit. So numbers is a fruit of fruit. Does that make sense? Um, I feel like numbers and, and, you know, all these counting things and everything or thousands, multitudes, that is a fruit, a fruit. That's a fruit of abiding. So the, the actual fruit is actually the spiritual, you know, the spiritual things that you receive out of just simply saying, I am abiding in the vine. So sacred smallness, it, it, it talks about a lot of different things. Um, you just have to get the book to see it all. Um, but one of my favorite chapters is the one about abi abiding, you know, living in the vine, living in Jesus. And that, that attitude and that heart posture it makes us realize nothing else matters. The only thing that matters is me to say yes to Jesus. Whether that takes me in front of millions, whether it brings me in front of one or in front of nobody. There are so many people in heaven. I, I believe when we go to heaven, we're going to notice people that nobody knew. And they're going to be the heroes in heaven, but they have lived such hidden lives. You know, but they lived wholly devoted lives unto the Lord. And um, he's just so faithful, you know, and he wants us to come back to the place of what is important to him to be important to us. So I think I said a lot of things. <laughs> just kind of going through, yeah, what the Lord wants for us. And as ministers of the gospel, you know, can I share one more thing? Yeah, go ahead. Um, Okay, so, you know, this book is geared towards uh, everybody, the believer, um, but it also has a, it's also geared towards ministers of the gospel. Everybody's a minister, wherever they are. But one question I ask in this book is, if, if somebody asks you, what would you consider a minister? Then what is going to be your first thought? Well, when Paul wrote about ministers and ministry, he used the word diakonos, which is Greek. And it literally means servant, the lowest servant. This is God's definition of ministry. Servant, that is diakonos. And so when God thinks about ministry and ministers, this is the word that he's using. So I believe that God is bringing us back to a place of when people say, oh, they're a minister. They're not thinking first, you know, oh, how much money they have, how much, how many things they do, how many people. They're thinking this man, this woman is a servant. So. That's so good. You know, I was going to, you know, talk about my favorite chapter so far that, because, you know, I opened it up, well, what jumps out at me for? I was going through it, but you said so much, and so as you heard her say, get your copy. I have my copy. So make sure you guys get your copy. Um, and so there's so much to say, but you know, you said a lot in your book. But you know, I believe in reading and acting out, but also believe in impartation. So Jenny, before we go, can you pray over everybody watching live and via replay and everything, and to say what yeah. what's in your heart to say? Sure, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you so so grateful for your presence. Lord, we don't deserve it, but your grace has given it. And we just love you with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind. I pray for those who have been wrestling God in their soul and wrestling in their mind that they know that you're inviting them to a place. They know that you're calling them to a place, but they're wrestling because it looks different than they thought. They're wrestling because it doesn't make sense. Lord, I just pray for a spirit of surrender 
a spirit that's, that says yes, God, forever yes, just to always, Lord, follow you. I pray for that breakthrough to happen, that that you always have our yes, whether it makes sense or not. And Father, we just say to you, we don't care what it looks like as long as we're following you. Jesus, we're doing it for you. We're doing everything for you. And um, Father, I just pray for your freedom and and your love over every single person. I pray that the the goodness and the sweetness of your presence just comes in and invades every room right now that is listening, every person, every individual you see and you know and you love. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Jenny, thank you so much for spending your time and pouring out your time with us. This thank time. you, it's such an honor. You can find all of those interviews on our Faith Plus app under Faith in the Morning, as well as on our Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Have a wonderful day. Know that something good is going to happen to you today, so expect miracles. God bless.